What we're going to be looking at here is a lump sum sale of stocks with bonds here and we're going to be using the proportional method to account for this lump sum sale. And for example here Corporation A issued 1,000 units of a bond plus stocks here using a securities exchange dealer to sell these units here. And each unit sold includes point one here a bond at $1,000 par amount. Now it is a 12% stated interest rate here but that equals its yield right here. So the bond is selling at par here. So the par value equals its fair value here. And two here, this uh, unit, uh, each unit here would include 10 shares of common stock here. And the common stock has a $5 par value. And the current market price on this common stock is $40 per share. Now each unit sold is sold to an outside investors at $1,700 per unit. So what uh, Corp A is selling here is uh, 10 shares of common stock here at $40 per share plus one bond here at a $1,000 par value. And that's its uh, stated, that's the par value and it's selling at, at par amount here. So each unit uh, includes the $1,700 they're going to receive for these 10 shares of stock they sell and this one bond. Now, in this for this deal here, the dealer is going to retain 40 units as an underwriting fee. So, um, Corp A is only going to get receipts here for 960 units they sell. Okay, so what we're going to be looking at here is the proportional method for this lump sum sale for our allocation. And we're going to use that uh, proportional method here because the fair value of all the securities are known here. So uh, this is where you use the proportional method. So you're going to allocate the lump sum received here proportionately between the securities here. So let's look at how we'd make this allocation and we'll just look at it from one unit here and we'll carry it forth here from one unit. So one unit here is going to uh, be for one bond here per unit and that is selling at its par value here $1,000 here. And then we have 10 shares of common stock here at $40 per share. That's the market price on this common stock. Uh, so we got 10 shares times $40 here for $400. So our total fair value here um, on this one unit here would be the $1,000 for the bond plus $400 for the stock for $1,400. Now proportionately um, this is how it's allocated here. So the bond would get well $1,000 divided by $1,400 here or $1,000 again divided, one divided by $1,000 for the fractional amount here and that would approximately approximate 71.4 percent. So that would what's allocated to the bonds here and our common stock well that's just 400 divided by 1400. So we got 0.4 here divided by 1.4 and that equals 28.6 percent. So we've allocated our our, our, uh, our unit here uh, ba proportionately based on the value we assigned to our bond and the value assigned to our common stock, which was their fair value here. So total allocation here is for 100%. Okay, so now we have to look at the allocation of the receipts between our bonds and our common stock here. So the, the lump sum receipt, well, we sold uh, 1,000 units here times uh, $1,700 per unit. Well, we sold 906, we're going to get paid here for 960 units, but there's a total of 1,000 units included here at $1,700 per unit. The total amount here is $1,700,000. So that would be the lump sum receipt seats, but we do have to pay the um, broker those for 40 units here. So we're just using this for our allocation here. So they allocate the bond. Again, we use that fractional amount here, 1 divided by 1.4 that we calculated up here, times the uh, total receipts here of 1.7 million. And that, for the bond, we'd have allocated there 1 a million two hundred fourteen thousand two hundred eighty five dollars. Now when we come down to our common stock same amount you take your fractional amount that we calculated up here times uh, the total receipts here of one point seven million and our common stock would be allocated four hundred eighty five thousand seven hundred and fourteen dollars. Now we've got uh, something to deal with here on our bond allocation. Remember we sold it at par here for one thousand dollars per unit here but because of our allocation here we've allocated it at a premium and we'll have to account for that. So the allocated bond here was $1,214,285. The bond's fair value, well that would be a thousand units here times a thousand dollar par value 
on the bond here for a total of a million dollars. So the difference here, you can see we got a premium amount here. 1.2, 1,214,285 versus the 1 million here. So our premium that we're going to have to account for is $214,285 on this bond. Now the other thing we have to deal with our issue, is allocating the issue costs. So our total issue costs, remember those were the 40 units that we have to pay to the broker here. The broker retains for selling our uh, the total of 1,000 or a total of 1,000 units, but he's keeping 40 of them here for himself. Times $1,700 per unit. Total amount here is $68,000 that we're going to have to allocate to the broker, and that is accounted for as an issue cost. So again, our bond allocation, we just take the fractional amount that we allocated to the bond times the 68,000. We come up with 40, 40, $48,572 allocated to our bond. Common stock, same thing here. Just take the fractional amount that we allocated times the total issue costs here, 68000 we We're going to have $19,428 allocated to the common stock for our issue costs. Now remember, this common stock portion, that's going to be a reduction to additional paid in capital here for our common stock. Okay, we've done our allocation here between our receipts, allocating the total receipts here, and also our issue costs here. And that was based on our this proportional allocation up above here, the proportional method here. So just remember that the proportional method here is you have to determine your fair value for each of the what's being offered here, take the total amount here, and then the fair value for each unit are for each security here divided by the total fair value gives you the proportional amount here and we've done it in a fractional a fractional amount here okay so now let's go and look at how we'd record this here okay so this is the what we have we're going to be looking here we're going to have a cash receipts here and then we're going to also have some unamortized costs here on those bonds that's going to, we're going to capitalize that then we're going to have over here on our liabilities uh, of course our cash and our unamortized costs is on the asset side of our balance sheet then on our liability side here we're going to have some bonds payable a bond premium here on that bond and then on our equity on our balance sheet on our for our equity we're going to have some common stock and some additional paid in capital here for our common stock so let's just go through these uh, accounts one by one here so starting with our cash account here on this lump sum sale so this is um, the lump sum receipts here well that would have been a thousand units sold minus the 40 units here held for the uh, securities dealer that we have to pay them times that total seventeen hundred dollars per unit and that was remember one million six hundred thirty two thousand dollars and um, that was based on the fact that here we have to deduct those issue costs here of sixty eight thousand dollars from the total amount amount of uh, that would uh, total amount here we have to deduct our issue costs here so on our cash account here we would have debited that here for one million six hundred thirty two thousand dollars now moving over to our bonds payable here well we had a thousand of those here at a thousand dollar par amount here so we'd have credited that here for one million dollars that's our bonds payable here at a thousand dollar par now remember this is where we come up with this bond premium that we have allocated here and that was simply the total amount here that we allocated to the bond one million two hundred fourteen thousand two eighty five here uh, less the of uh, a uh, par amount here of one million dollars that gave us a premium here difference here between our power amount of 1 million and the allocation here 1 million 214,285 gave us a premium here of 214,285 so here we have to add this premium here to our bonds payable here so that's what we because of the allocation here we had to set up this premium account okay so now let's look over to our equity account here on the balance sheet here and that's for the common stock well we would have to set up a, a common stock par amount here and that was based on a thousand units here and 10 shares per unit at a five dollar par a per stock here and that we would credit here for fifty thousand dollars and then uh, remember the total stock allocation here for our common stock was four hundred eighty five thousand four hundred and uh, seven hundred and fourteen dollars and what we would do here for that total stock allocation here 
it, it was split up here between the par value of 50,000 here and the additional paid in capital here of 435,714. So you take the par value of 50,000 from the total stock allocation here of 485,714. You're going to come up with your additional paid in capital here. Credit that here for 435,714. But remember here those issue costs when we're dealing with these allocations here we have to detect deduct our issue costs here from an additional paid in capital. So we've debited our additional paid in capital for the issue costs. We can go down here and look at those. So we've got our issue costs here for the amount that was allocated to the common stock here, 19428 So you take, you reduce your additional paid in capital here, 435714 by the um, uh, issue costs here and you come up with the net amount here an additional paid in capital of four hundred sixteen thousand two hundred and eighty six dollars so we've taken care of our issue costs here for our common stock now the only other thing we have to take care of is our issue costs here for the bond that we allocated remember we allocated uh, you can look at it down here we allocated forty eight thousand five hundred seventy two dollars for our bond for our issue costs here so what we would do here in the case of our bond we have to set up an unamortized cost here on the as an asset here on our balance sheet and we have to cap capitalize this unamortized bond issue cost here on our as an asset on our balance sheet here and we would have debited that here for the bond uh, what we allocated to the bond here at forty eight thousand five hundred and seventy two dollars here so this becomes a capitalized amount here for the bond issue cost here and then we'd have to amortize it down over the life of the bond here okay so we've taken care of um, what we had to here with this lump sum sale where we had to set it up here as a proportional uh, amount here we had to allocate between our bond here and our common stock now remember just to go over it real quickly here our cash amount that we actually received in this lump sum sale that was reduced here by our issue cost those 40 units that we had to uh, that the broker retained here for selling those units here so we had to reduce that here and then our bond payable the other thing we have to do because we allocated that proportionately here we ended up with a pr bond premium in this case and we had to add that to uh, we our bond payable is going to be at the what it was issued here at its par amount here but we had to set up this bond premium here because of our allocation that we did proportionately here here and then just remember our common stock here that um, we had to set up our par account here and then the uh, the balance that would between uh, what we allocated to our stock here went into additional paid in capital to our common stock here but we had to reduce it here by those issue costs here to come up with the net amount here of additional paid in capital and then one other thing just remember here with that bond here uh, the issue cost here we have to capitalize it here as an asset on our balance sheet and then amortize that down okay and okay so I guess that takes care of everything here where we uh, issued a common stock here with some bonds and you can see that we've had several things that we had to deal with we had to deal with a bond premium here we had to deal with the additional paid in capital here to our common stock and then both those issue costs here that we had to come up with for both the uh, common stock here and also the issue cost that for a bond that had to be allocated okay all right so that takes care of our lump sum stale sale here of a stock with bonds where we use the proportional method here and just remember we use the proportional method here because we knew the fair value of both our bonds here and our common stock so that meant we had to use the proportional method for allocating our issue costs here and also our lump sum receipts of our cash here and we had to set up our common stock and our bonds payable here all right so that takes care of our lump sum sale of our stock with our bonds using this proportional method